Hey, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I am great. New camera, who dis? So, uh, I mentioned in last week's vlog that there might not be a vlog this week, clearly from this video. I managed to pull it off. There's gonna be a vlog. It's gonna be a little bit shorter, though, because, um, well, I got things to do. I got family coming in town and whatnot. But I have this new camera here, and I thought this would be a good opportunity to kind of play around with it in a vlog and let's go out and do something, see some things, and I can familiarize myself with the formatting and everything and the different lens. Look at how wide this thing goes. Do we like that? Is the audio okay? I won't know. I will have no idea until I'm editing this, so hopefully it's not a total disaster. I also have this, like, super steady feature on, which is good because... My hands are really shaky today for some reason. Don't want to forget to take this inside with me. Hey Tuck, you ready to go inside? Yeah, it's kind of hot, isn't it, bud? It's kind of hot. Off to a great start. That was a great shot, wasn't it? You just licked my camera? Why did you do that? Don't lick the camera. Okay, I'm missing one of my dum-dums. Toby! Where's Toby? What are you doing? You're knocking everything over. Don't do that. Toby, you yeah, come on, bud, what you doing? Let's go, time to go inside. Yeah, you're so happy. Tucker, stop rubbing on the chairs. You're scaring Pumpkin. Pumpkin's snapping. Gotta get the clean sheets nice and dirty, right Pumpkin? Right bud, you say hi. Oh, you're so cute. Oh, things are a little bit grainy inside when it's dark. Did some finishing touches on a video that should be out in a few days. I think we're good to go. I'm gonna miss you, Pumpkin. I'm gonna miss you. You such a good bud, as yes, you were. Guess I should tell you what I was planning on doing. Let's go to the botanicals. Walk around, have a look at the Japanese garden. Man, that's really grainy. Huh, I'm sure there's a, I need to adjust my F value or something like that, I don't know. Or it could have something to do with that image stabilization thing. Maybe I'll turn that off. Also, let me turn the air down. It's kind of warm today. It's like, I think the height's 94. Um, what was I gonna say? I don't know. Oh, I was going to say this microphone that I'm using has like a built-in stabilization. So like, depending on how far away it is, it's supposed to normalize your audio, which seems risky to me, right? Because the only way it's gonna be able to change things is by adjusting the frequency and the hertz and with the same thing. And uh, I feel like that's gonna cause a lot of background noise, but I don't know how to turn that feature off. Okay, slight change of plans. That little orange exclamation point, see it? Yeah, I just put air in these tires yesterday, so I'm not driving all the way into the city when there's something up with my tires. That's all right, plenty of stuff to do here. Just one of those things means it wasn't meant to be today. Hey, I wasn't gone long, was I? How you doing? I put on pants and everything. I mean shorts. Okay, so I got my little pink clearance table out here. I haven't gotten a tripod yet that's going, I need a special adapter, so sorry about that. But I figured there were some plants I kind of wanted to talk about that I picked up recently. Like as soon as I saw them, I was like, oh, these are adorable. I have to show them off. Look at, look at, isn't it cute? I mean, I know it's just a little spruce, but it's adorable. Like super adorable. <laughs> That was embarrassing. Adult puberty is a thing. Be nice. This is just a tiny little dwarf Alberta spruce. It's actually a special variety. Let me look at the tag. The vlog didn't come prepared for class. Sorry. Here's the tag. Tiny Towers Dwarf Alberta Spruce. It says that it's an exclusive from Monrovia. Oh, I liked how quickly that shift focus. That's nice. Wow. Whoa. Okay, I like that. It probably has a lot to do with lighting. I'm not going to assume that it's going to do that all the time. Anyways, as I was saying about this adorable little bitty spruce, uh, I'll just read the tag off for starters, or since it focuses, I just dropped it. Hold on. Hey, Tobes. How you doing? Yes, I got two. I'll show you the other one. How close can I get before it gets blurry? Oh, man, that is a nice autofocus. Sorry if it's a little bit shaky, but... There's the tag for this. No, no. There we go. There's the tag. Three through eight, and it says this only gets four to six feet tall and two feet wide. Now, 
I don't know. I did some Googling with this one because Alberta spruces, the dwarf Alberta spruces particularly, sometimes they tend to get sort of like chubby looking. I don't know how to describe it. Their shape can become undesirable is basically what I'm getting at here. You know, I'm sure a lot of you have seen the dwarf Alberta spruces and they'll either look nice or they'll just kind of look like a weird misshapen ball of spruce needles. You know what I'm saying? And depending on where you live, the dwarf Alberta spruces do tend to have a lot of reversion, meaning that they'll go back to their original state, which is, I think, a, just a white spruce. There's a big difference between those plants, you know, a white spruce. Those get, I mean, probably, like, what, 50 feet tall? They get gigantic, and their foliage looks completely different from everything else. That's not what you want to happen with these. They're going to stay really small, so uh, if any any limbs start to come out on this thing. It starts to push out any branches that are reverted and cut those off immediately to stop that in its tracks. From what I've read about the Alberta spruce reversion, it does seem like a lot of it might be due to stress, but I mean, I don't know. I see it happen in plenty that seem perfectly healthy. Uh, well, the ones I've seen it happen to, they seem perfectly healthy. I haven't seen a lot of reversion where I live. So some of it may have to do a little bit with climate, time of year they're planted, I don't know, uh, but I do know that it is a problem, just not one I've had to deal with very often, or like had to help people with very often. I've never had to deal with it personally. I've only had like three Alberta spruces, dwarf Alberta spruces. They never, like they were fine for like 20 years. So those were my parents. They got them for me when I was a little kid because I thought they were Christmas trees and it was there from Kmart and super cheap. So that's uh, how I got into the Alberta spruces. <laughs> how I got, it. it's not really a plant I'm into but just look at how adorable these are they're just perfect they're just teeny tiny little bitty baby pine trees well spruce trees you you get what i'm saying nice shape to them i uh, am at that time of year where i'm starting to kind of transition what i'm doing i like to get some things out that will look good during the fall and the winter because you know i mean all these tropicals they can't stay out here all year they go into the garage and uh the big ones get stored at a greenhouse for anybody who doesn't know, just putting that out there. But I do like to have a few things outside in the wintertime so it's just not blech. And I think I talked... To, no, that video won't have been out yet. I had a video that was going to come out before this video, but I had to bump it because I almost forgot about the garden tour. So I'm just like, oh, I need to film the garden tour. I was like, I want to wait till next week. But no, 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 no. It's already mid-September. Got to get that done. Anyways, I thought these were really cute. They're, I guess, not crazy exciting, but I just... I fell in love with them when I saw them at the store... Tucker, okay, but that was, you'd get, oh my goodness. They'll be cute outside during the winter time. I'm gonna pot them up into, uh, hopefully, I have two matching planters to put them in. That would be ideal, and they'll just be cute. I'm really, really would like to do something kind of fairy garden-esque with them, but I don't always get into the fairy garden things just because all those little pieces and everything, they cost a fortune, so when I do do fairy garden type things. I don't usually film with lots of little trinkets. I just kind of like sort of faux bonsai things a little bit. And that might be what I do with them. I don't know. They're just adorable. When I do that, the video will come out. I'll do a video on it. Uh, probably like October-ish, maybe even November. I don't know. We'll see. October is a tricky month for me to predict around here because I just never know what's going to happen during the that month. Sorry, I just got really distracted by a butterfly. <laughs> Yeah, October is unpredictable, so I don't like to make big plans for that month because it's all very weather dependent. But yeah, you see them, they cute. Okay, and then my other plan was I wanted to do a really quick and simple little fall planter, but I don't know how I'm going to do that without a tripod. I mean, I've gotten pretty skilled at doing everything here with one hand. I just feel like it might be a little bit obnoxious with the constant, like, hands and things everywhere. So I don't know what I'm going to... Hey, Tobes. You good boy. See how quickly I get distracted? Also, see how intense the arm is with the wide angle. <laughs> I don't like it. I mean, I like it in the aspect of being able to show a lot at one time. So it does look like the image is a little bit more shaky in the wide. But um, that's a lot. Man, for people out there who hate the hands in the videos, this would just be a nightmare. What are you going to do now? It's all arm. Hey, I'm sorry. I couldn't help but poke a little bit. I can give the gist of what I was going to do here. I have a tiny little faux barrel thing. I think these are from Lowe's. I got them last year, but I think it's from Lowe's. Could be from Walmart. 
I'm not sure. But I remember it was cheap, and I thought it would be so cute to put one of these asters in the middle, this cute pink aster, with this Artemisia back here. Isn't that adorable? Where's the variety? The silver brocade Artemisia. That contrast, wouldn't that be nice? Let's look at, see, they look really nice together. The problem is, I also realize it's not just a tripod situation, but we're going through a bit of a heat spell right now. And like I said, it's going to be in the like low to mid 90s today. And it's actually supposed to keep getting hotter the next few days. So I don't think I want to be pulling this apart. So I'm going to have to do a lot of root work with that Artemisia to make it fit in here with that aster. So, so it's probably better to hold off on that anyways right there we go with that focus i love using artemisias the problem is unless i put them in the ground someplace where i like i won't touch it and it won't get near any water i have a lot of issues with them rotting when it gets super super hot outside so that's why i thought an aster might be an okay plant to pair it with climate depending but they tend to be a little bit more drought tolerant than like a mum so I thought those would go well together. It, this reminds me so much of like a dichondra, the silver falls. But the dichondra, again, it's one of those plants where it does the best for me if I don't touch it. <laughs> and a lot of it seems to depend a lot on the weather. So when things are really hot and toasty outside and we get a lot of rain, the dichondras, eh, they tend to sort of melt away and rot on me unless I make sure to put them in something that doesn't have like dripper anything like that on it. So similar effect, but should be more tough. Still, I don't want to do that when it's potentially, I think it's going to be like 95 or 96 tomorrow. I can't, every time I look at the weather app, I'm getting something different. It actually worked out well not going to the botanicals today just because I double checked the forecast and they're like, oh, we know we said you're going to have bright sunny skies all day, but we changed our mind. It's going to rain. I don't know when it's going to rain, but um, it says thunderstorms at some point, and that wouldn't have been great while out, uh, you know, walking around in the gardens and everything. Okay, so there's those. Um, for people who are wondering if it's too late in the year and why I'm doing these things, well, one, I don't stop. I keep gardening as long as I can, but I do try and be aware of things like, hey, it's gonna be crazy hot outside, don't plant these. And I potentially, still have several weeks of decent weather left for planting. And with the shrubbery and whatnot, like the Alberta spruces back there, they're fine to be planted out in fall. And then with these, these are technically perennials where I live, so if they're going in the ground, wouldn't be a big deal at all. I also picked up a couple of these crocus mias. Now this is the Lucifer variety, which is my favorite. Here's the tag, the Lucifer crocus mia. And then there's the info if you wanna pause on that and check it out they're typically hardy this says zone five i think that's a little bit generous i mean a lot of it's gonna have to do with where you cite them and whatnot but i used to have a gigantic gigantic massive planting of these over underneath my banana trees all the way down there see the bananas does that help oh gosh that's too much bananas right above my finger but that area has become more shaded over the years so they weren't liking that anymore that's my friend's pool float. I need to put it away. Anyways, like I was saying, uh, this is a zone six garden and we had a bad winter and they didn't come back. So zone five, like I said, seems a little bit generous, but I don't know that like there, I said there are factors like planting depth where they're sited, the, how well the soil drains and what's in the soil even can be a factor. But look at those flowers. Normally that would go from here and up. I gotta keep my hand back there, keep it focused. Come on now, there we go. But yeah, it's a pretty plant and it only has one bloom on it so far, which is fine. Typically these would bloom out midsummer. So uh, I don't know if they're done blooming or if they haven't started yet because when you get them from a grower, you know, there's differences based on when they decide to pot these up. But it was a good deal. It was like um, $6.99, I think, $6.98 for these. And they have a whole bunch going in them. Normally like the bags of bulbs can sometimes be like 12 bucks for just a few of them. So I thought, you know what, why not? It's a little bit late for these to get these in the ground. That's what I was talking about with the asters and the artemisia and you know, that it might be a little bit late to be planting things 
with certain things. This one, maybe. But I got them anyways because it's a good deal and I love them. These Crocus Mias, they'll form really nice dense clumps and then have these long sprays, just like you can see right there, of these lovely red flowers on them. And there are different varieties. There's yellow and orange and whatnot, but typically I just like the red one. I think the red one's really pretty. And there is something, might just be me, that I find kind of tropical about them. I think it's just the red tube flowers, the tubular flowers, those trumpet-shaped flowers. That's the word I was looking for. Uh, I, I love them. I think they're so pretty. And they are kind of like a gladiola, but also different. I, I like gladiolas. I know a lot of people don't like them for whatever reason. I think that they're absolutely lovely flowers. But this is smaller and maybe a little bit more formal. They can be worked into a cottage garden. You can do all sorts of things with these. They're absolutely lovely bulbs. Oh, that I mentioned that? Bulbs. Typically you get them as bulbs. But when you can find them as plants, I like that a little bit better. These are a plant that I would normally prefer to throw the bulbs in the ground in the uh, early fall or early spring. But like I said, this is, is a good deal. So I just went ahead and did none of those things and picked these up. Oh, but if you're in zone 5 and you've had great luck with this plant, let me know. Comment that down. Oh, I forgot to turn the fan off. I'm so sorry. I took a break. It got hot. I need to cool off. Yeah, let me know your experience with them. I've, like I said, if it's gotten really cold, I'm talking negative temperatures, Fahrenheit, then that's when I've had them. Well, I guess they would still come back, but like only a few of them would come back, which uh, isn't great, but it's better than nothing, right? Last plant. Now, hold on. Don't get judgy, this is on clearance. It's only a few bucks, and I mostly got it, well, it's really, I only got it for the dichondra. Dichondra is one of those plants, I already talked about, like, issues I've had with it before, but when I see it at the nurseries, the issue I have with dichondra is that they're pretty much always, always tangled up in the flats. You know, they root in, and any part of that stem that touches soil, they root into it. So when they're in a flat at a nursery for a while, they're all grown together. And I feel bad going through the nursery flats and just shredding them to pieces in hopes of getting one decent plant out. So since these were in here and separated and fairly long, though a little bit damaged, I went ahead and I picked it up. because so I was like, you know, I think that'll be nice. I have some things I needed dichondra for, for some fall plant, or need, you know, or you know, need kind of subjective, but things I wanted to do with dichondra in a uh, fall planter that'll be, well, it's more of a Halloween planter. The vinca is just an added bonus. It's kind of dry because, you know, it went from being in the 70s and low 80s to 94 degrees, so it didn't get its water as soon as it needed to, but it did get water. Just, I mean, you know, it happens. Back off. It's all right. <laughs> Leave me alone. Nobody's perfect. Now, actually, I thought that I had this sitting someplace where my um, micro emitters were hitting it, and turns out they were hitting it, but not enough. So, but it's perking up. It'll be fine. And the Vinca, like I said, just sort of an added bonus. It's pretty, but I am going to be pulling it apart to get that dichondra out. And that's kind of it. No exciting, like, houseplant type things that I can think think of. It's just like little guys. The Alberta spruce, like those little tiny towers of Alberta spruces, those are what I'm the most excited about. I think they're so cute. I cannot wait to pop those up with like all kinds of rocks and gravel, like maybe put them on like a little fake mountain. I don't know what I'm going to do, but it's going to be fun. Otherwise, just gardening business as usual. I've been out here doing a lot of pruning and cutbacks. The impatience, you can see there's some impatience back here. Had to give those a chop. They were getting long and leggy, which is typical this time of year. It's not unusual. And I need to do the same thing with my petunias down here. Look at them. Oh, they've gotten so long and leggy. The problem is these alacajas are coming over so far that they're starting to shade things, which isn't that big a deal. I need to pull these anyways. I may have actually just talked about that in the garden tour. The garden tour that was out prior to this. I don't know. But, um, yeah. So, actually, and maybe next week or the week after vlog, it's going to be time to start pulling those out and getting them potted up into something more suitable to take inside because this adenidia palm that's right here goes off to a greenhouse. And I can see I have lots of foliage to prune off my other adenidias. That's one thing I like about the adenidias is they're self-cleaning. So it doesn't look attractive to have those yellowing fronds on there, but that's just them saying, okay, we're done with those. We're putting out new ones, which is fine. So I'll actually probably maybe give that a couple more days and then see if I can't pluck them right off there. It's once the crown shafts sheath 
this one that goes right here and up to the newest frond. Once those turn brown, they'll usually come right off. They'll fall on their own, but I don't usually have the patience to wait for them to fall on their own. I like to just get them off of there. And you totally can just go in and cut those leaves off too. I just, I can't really reach from here. So I figured, you know, in a day or two, they'll fall off on their own and then I'll be able to get to them because they'll be down here where I can get to them. <laughs> Been a few hours editing the garden tour that I said I was going to try and keep brief. How did that happen? I don't know. I'm sure a lot of that's just like walking around and like you see all these big dark blue chunks in here. Those all get cut out and after you cut out a few hundred of those, things shorten up an awful lot. I thought I'd check out the nighttime quality on here without like messing with settings or anything and it's not too bad. It's grainy, but I would kind of expect that from this. I'm sure if I move into more light, yeah, much better because, you know, it's lit. Ha, <laughs> it's lit. Even when you go wide, not quite as great. Oh, again, I forgot to turn off the fan. I'm so sorry. Hot, need the fan. And the mosquitoes. I'm trying a, a new bug spray. It's like an all natural one. I swear, it attracts the bugs. I have never been bugged by this many insects at nighttime as I have tonight while I'm using this bug spray. It's just like a lemongrass and um, peppermint oil type thing, which in theory should work, especially anything with the peppermint oil in it. It's got an interesting hue to it, doesn't it? But um, no, it's just bugs everywhere. It's not just mosquitoes, it's like everything. Like they're landing in my hair, they're driving me nuts. But that's just part of being outside, right? Oh, they're pretty at night. Still grainy though. That Rudbeckia, man, the um, the heat spells with the storms and everything, it hasn't really been doing well with that. Did I just see a star? Is there a star back there? No? But um, I would say this is an improvement. That's not a bad picture, even though it's kind of grainy. I mean, look at the sky. That's pretty impressive, considering I haven't messed with any settings and there's nothing special going on here. That's pretty good. I love nighttime in the garden. It's really when I'm the most talkative. So I wanted to get something that would be good at night. And this is okay. I'm just filming in 1080 for this first video. I'm not like gonna bump things up into 4K until I'm more comfortable with just like standard video over here. But that's not bad. It's still grainy. I get a much better picture with my big camera, my main camera. But like I said, I don't vlog with that a ton just cause I'm always paranoid walking around with it that I'm gonna do something to like break it, mess it up a little bit and see, wow, when I go out wide, it gets much, much, much more dark. Interesting, wonder what that's about. Just a, another thing to experiment with and play around with. Ugh, gosh, I love this elephant here so much. They're my favorites. I'm like batting bugs out of my face as I'm over here looking at this thing. So pretty. Love watching it change colors and everything. The foliage on the Thai Giants, I mean really on all of the alakajas, I know this is actually a Lukakaja, but I think it's because the foliage is so big on these elephant ears that you can see all the intricacies within the patterns. Well, the blue is very intense. That's That comes through to the camera quite well, a little bit too well. You know what I'm saying? It looks like a painting. I love it. That is finally done. It's the next day. It, um, I actually exported that video last night and then ended up deciding when I, I rewatch them before I release them. I was like, you know what? There's some changes that need to be made, so doing it again. It's not very exciting because I don't need to waste somebody's time with that one. But I was thinking, oh, don't, don't, don't look at the table. Yes, there are a lot of tags here because when I make the videos, I have my pile of tags I use to make sure everything's filled out correctly. Oh no, why did I close that? Hope that didn't stop the export process. No, open. Oh no, still good. I was thinking uh, I might run by a nursery because there's a plant I need, need to pick up. Maybe they'll have it. Let's go check that out. I mean, I'm just running and running out, but we'll see some plants. And I did fix my tire situation. I've had an issue with my tires for a while where I have to put air in just one of them like every few weeks and it's because the little valve cap that goes over, you know, where you put the air in was like stripped. Well, not the cap, but like the actual part you screw it into was stripped. 
the mail end. Anyways, I went to the gas station because I, I didn't feel like getting my compressor out and everything. And um, it was like fine. Uh, the pressure was low because the the cap thing was kind of loose, but I screwed it back on and actually went on all the way, which was kind of weird. So I was like, huh. It hasn't, it's always, you know, it's one of those things when something's stripped, you turn it and turn it and turn it, and then it's tight, but then if you turn it a little bit more, it pops back off. That's how it's been, but it's kind of, I mean, it didn't fix itself. My car was in the shop a lot back in August, so maybe that had something to do with it. I'm not sure. Um, maybe, I mean, like, maybe they fixed it, or maybe there's, like, a tire fairy that's, like, going around fixing tires. I don't know, but... That's nice, so I just need to find a tighter cap to put on there. So there's the most useless update ever. <laughs> You're welcome. Oh, oh, I'm already feeling temptations and I haven't got another car. I don't need more spindle palms. That's ridiculous, it's not necessary, I have enough. But it's just so cute. Oh, got some cute little Australian tree ferns. Those are adorable, little guys. And some clivia. I love clivia. Beautiful plants. What's nice about them is they still look really cool. They have a neat shape to them, even when they're not in flower. Look at the little lipstick plant. I love these. Hummingbirds would be so appreciative of this, but eh, I don't need it. Oh, okay, plant friends. Homework assignment. What kind of fern is this? Look at those roots. Those are some cool roots, but no label. Any ideas? There are lots of ferns out there, so I'm not even gonna bother guessing. And here's that Kentia palm. I've always wanted one, but you know, they're expensive. It's really cute. Oh, oh, it's on sale, uh-oh. Hey, listen, sometimes you just gotta treat yourself. Oh, look at it, it's so cute. It's so perfect. Yeah, I'm home, and I, I, I treated myself. I also noticed when I got home that things were very dry and unhappy, so I went over to my timer that all my drips on, and it says there that they've been running, and you can switch them to manual, so I did that, and nothing happened, but then there's a manual dial that I turned. Then they started running. Sometimes you have to, like, take them apart and reset them. They have, like, magnets in them that get stuck, so very inconvenient timing like some of the warmer days we've had all summer but you know, oh well at least i have the drip right makes things much easier i'd rather like sit down with a little timer for a few minutes and fix it than have to hand water everything that's for sure i'm trying very strategically to not show what i picked up at the nursery only i mean you already saw it in the back of the car it turned out when i got home it came it's there's it's there there's some things that um are going to require a lot of talking and um, uh, a tripod, more than likely, or someone to hold my camera for me, and uh, maybe a, a rant, potentially. So I've decided I'm going to just hold off on that till next week So I'm in a good mood. I hope y'all are in a good mood. I don't feel like, yeah, it's a, it's a whole thing. So uh, that's where things will pick up next week. Not trying to, like, be a tease or anything like that. It's just it wouldn't fit in. It's the, I need to keep this fairly short, even though I have no idea how long this is as it is. I get it, gotta get it edited. So like I mentioned, I have my family coming in town and everything very soon. Uh, I wasn't even sure if I was going to get a vlog out today. So I'm happy that I was able to do that and get to do some things, talk about some new plants, some little planters I'm working on, and all that fun stuff. And let's just say I'm about to get pretty saturated with rubbing alcohol in name. It's, you, might, you might understand what's going on. Sometimes a good price is too good to be true. <laughs> I felt the rant like bubbling, bubbling up out of my throat. And I was like, no, no, stop it. Not what we're doing. Not today. I really need to get that slice of pizza out of the pool. It's, it's funny, but I mean, it's so ugly. I love my friends. When I was editing the garden tour and I noticed that I had forgotten to take that out of the pool, I was like absolutely mortified. You know, years ago I had like swans and toucans and parrots and flamingos floating around in here and I was fine with that. But for some reason in my head, the slice of pizza, that's just too much <laughs> it's going too far even though it's really not it's harmless it's just it just it look, look it looks so dumb i completely forgot to put this majesty palm back in here i pulled it out i just have this sitting in here you know i got these for the majesty palm video specifically and uh, 
I pulled it out because it was in the way of the ficus lorata for the garden tour. And then I just I left the poor thing sitting out all night long. I'm so sorry. I think this needs some more soil though. Seems to be a little bit loose in there, kind of wobbling around. Oh, and I forgot yesterday in the garden tour I wanted to update with um, this little cordelin cutting when I did this whole area. I went ahead and I took one of my cordelins and I just cut its head off and I was like, look at how easy these are to propagate. Stuck it in a pot and it's been growing. Still, the old foliage looks terrible. Remember, there was a big snail problem out here. There's still a snail problem, but it's definitely gotten a lot better. It just took some time. I put that slug and snail bait down and, I mean, there's snails, so I guess it would make sense that that would take a while, but there's an update with that. It's, you know, it's growing. It's just, it's nothing special, just a little cordelin cutting. But why did I just set that in the middle? <laughs> put it away. Like that would just, why? Why did I even do that? That doesn't make any sense. I love that I finally have an arbor back here for my honeysuckle and it's like, no, no, just gonna eat your hydrangeas. And instead it looks like the milkweed vine has decided to grow on there. Okay, another milkweed vine to cut down. Yeah, I think with this honeysuckle, I'll probably this fall just like give it a full cut back, like pretty close to the ground and then fully retrain it up this trellis in the springtime because it's already, it's just too much of a mess and like, you, you, know, you know, it's fine. Do your thing. The hummingbirds and butterflies are enjoying it. So whatever, it's the end of the year. Just have a party. Yeah, again, thanks for hanging out. It's been a fun few days. So there'll probably be a lot more going on next week. I don't know, we'll see. Hey, if you haven't already and you'd like to, you can give the video a thumbs up. I appreciate it. it. makes a big difference for the videos and for the channels. And thank you. And subscribe as well and hit that notification bell. I'll upload multiple times a week. And that way you'll know new videos come out. Everybody's doing well, having a great day, great life, and everything's just going beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.